Join the Veris community for our first ever Q&A session with Whitebit Exchange, where we'll be giving away Veris. Call it making it rain. Whatever you call it, we value your attention and participation. And we'll be tipping and giving away trivia prizes of more than $450 worth of Veris while you learn about the groundbreaking solutions of this truly free open source blockchain protocol designed for privacy, safety, open participation, and unlimited scalability. Mark your calendar for July 28th at 1700 GMT and join us on the Veris Coin Discord at Veris coin.io forward slash discord where we'll share the developments of a rent-free blockchain economy that can scale to the world can't wait to see you there um, as a community developer among other community developers my um you know i've been working on it since uh, may 21st 2018 no developer fee and in fact, a number of, of us uh, in the early days uh, donated most of what we mined and staked to the Veris Coin Foundation um, to enable the Veris Coin Foundation to continue to help uh, development and, and the project as it, it develops and matures. So just a little, that's my background. Um, as Santos said, I was a VP at Microsoft. I was also uh, more on the technical side as well. So I was a technical fellow, which is basically like a VP level, um, engineer, architect, developer, whatever you want to call us at, uh, start Microsoft. Mike, if you could give your stream just one second to catch up with the bit rate, that would be, uh, that'd be great. Java did. And, uh, and the app that would use the chat. Oh, okay. Um, that's a, hopefully that is enough about my background because this is not to talk about me. This is to talk about Varus. So let's talk about Varus. What Varus is and, and what it was when we launched, um, is a Bitcoin, Komodo, and Zcash derived blockchain. So we uh, originally were a friendly fork of Komodo. We consider ourselves part of the overall, um, you know, Komodo community. But uh, we have done so many things on our own and, and really developed so many new technologies that Veris um, also stands on its own as one of the leading crypto projects at this point. It does support zero knowledge proofs, um, the sapling uh, protocol, same sapling protocol that uh, has been supported by Zcash and asset chains in Komodo, um, Pirate, etc. We've done a lot of, of work of our own. For example, we have a 50% proof of stake and 50% proof of work. Uh, hash out, uh, consensus algorithm that is provably 51% hash attack resistant. We also have uh, Komodo notarization, which is another backup for any kind of 51% attack resistance. Um, and then we have solved a number of the kind of general blockchain problems as we've moved towards this multi-currency platform, which we are testing on testnet and which I'm gonna talk about. We have um, solved the nothing at stake problem, which is kind of a fundamental uh, form of theoretical attack on proof of stake blockchains. Uh, we've also created the first only, uh, to our knowledge, uh, revocable, recoverable, friendly name identity. That means that on the Veris network, and this is on mainnet right now, you can create a friendly name ID. For example, mine is Mike. Um, there's the Veris Coin Foundation. There are there are um, thousands and thousands of friendly name IDs registered on the uh, Veris blockchain, and all of these IDs can be used as addresses. They can be used as addresses for receiving funds. They can be used for sending. Um, and if, unlike normal blockchain addresses, if you lose your keys to your ID. You can, in fact, revoke and recover your ID 
if you um, if your keys are stolen, you can still revoke and recover your ID. What you need to do ahead of time is is create a revocation um, ID. Once you do, you basically have the ability to um, always revoke and recover your ID as long as you have that uh, recover ID, which you normally don't need to use, just stashed away somewhere. And that that will recover any funds that are on the ID that will rec recover um, your ID itself. So that is Veris ID, and it's a unique capability on the Veris network. Now, what we've done next, and this is, uh, this is something uh, way back in 2018, we did a, a vision paper, and, and we've been executing uh, one, two, three. piece by piece on that vision paper. We're actually almost done with all of the technology that we described as enabling. And one of those technologies enables um, what we call public blockchains as a service. So that enables people to create new currencies and new blockchains within the Verus network. And because you can create not just new currencies, but new blockchains, the broader Verus network actually doesn't have any specific limit on scalability or function with scale. So what we're doing right now is we are testing the latest technology, which is multi-currency public blockchains as a service, but multi-currency, um, fractional currencies, reserve currencies, and automatic conversions. What we have right now on testnet, and I encourage everyone to get over to veriscoin.io Download the wallet. It supports uh, not just Ferris. It also supports Bitcoin, Zcash, Komodo, Ethereum, ERC-20 tokens, and a large variety of currencies. It does support mining and staking in the wallet. Um, there isn't anything really difficult to do uh, in order to mine or stake from the wallet. And it also includes worldwide support for the Veris testnet. Now, Veris Testnet is another um, blockchain network that is fully decentralized. There are no special servers running behind it to make it do what it's able to do. But um, what we're actually testing on the Veris Testnet is something uh, pretty amazing. It's not something you'll see on any other uh, blockchain, not any, not any Ethereum project, not any Bitcoin project, really no other project. And, and what it allows you to do is to um, convert, create currencies of your own that are based on various IDs and to uh, convert between various currencies on the various test net. Now, because we don't have um, screen sharing video i'm not going to launch the currency i was going to launch uh today but what i will do is after we finish this q a i will go ahead and launch that currency that will be the value currency v-a-l-u it's going to be a test launch for an actual currency called value um one of the companies in our a member company of our community is expecting to launch that currency and it will provide a way for people to be able to actually license um, technology by burning some of that currency, but it will also allow everyone on the Veris network to participate in that currency launch without application, without any um, website necessary directly on the blockchain. So the newest technology that Veris is testing right now worldwide, a public test that everyone can try and that will be available very shortly is um, multi-currency fractional reserves and public blockchains as a service that work completely integrated with the Veris ID technology, which is already available. Um, 
I think as an intro, probably the the way to close, since we're not going to do the other uh, streaming demo, is to say that what we're testing is the future of decentralized finance. What we're testing solves some of the major problems. The DeFi, even though DeFi is growing by leaps and bounds today on the Ethereum platform, they have issues with front running. They have issues with um, high fees. They have issues with a, a lot of uh, really fundamental challenges in uh, DeFi algorithms. And what we've done, we've actually used the fact that we are a Bitcoin UTXO derived blockchain to solve the problem of front running, solve um, many of these uh, issues. And right now, we believe that we have the easiest, most capable DeFi system in the world, which will soon be on mainnet. So I'm going to go ahead and stop with the intro, turn it back over to uh, Santos, and uh, I will be online for all the questions that I'm sure will be coming thank you very much all righty <clears throat> well thank you very much mike that was that was fantastic and i can't wait to uh i can't wait to see what comes from that uh from that value the it looks like we have andrew from whitebit uh we'll be yep. speaking now i uh i don't think he needs any introduction <laughs> so we uh, i think he can speak for himself for uh definitely being uh was it the head relations manager i believe it is Yep, head of project relations, right? Head of project relations. So please take it away. Sure. So firstly, can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So firstly, I would like to say a huge thank you to you, to the entire Veruscoin community for organizing this. It is my great pleasure to come and uh, like uh, do my best to probably build trust between our exchange and your community and. Uh, yeah, as, as, as I mentioned, I am uh, working as head of project relations on Whitebit and basically my job is to, let's say, um, keep in touch and work closely with all the projects that we list on Whitebit and uh, that we are partnering with. Yeah, And uh, over my career at Whitebit, I have worked with probably over a hundred different crypto projects. I don't know if that is an impressive number or not, but it is for me. And I must say that I am really enjoying the kind of community that you have here because of all the projects, not many of them were so, let's say, decentralized and community based. And it is really a delight to see like all those people from different corners of the world coming together and building something great. Yeah. So thank you for that. And yeah, I don't know if I should uh, like, yeah, probably I should say a couple of words about Whitebit itself as well. So we are a crypto, crypto to crypto and crypto to fiat exchange. Uh, we are working on the European jurisdiction and uh, our HQ is in, is in Estonia. Yeah, but a part of the team, myself included, are based in Ukraine. So um, we are, we have recently listed Veruscoin, if somebody doesn't know that. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Probably we shall we shall cover more as the questions come in. Okay. Perfect. Uh, if we if we line, we have uh, we had some pre-submitted questions that we had from uh, from our communities. Uh, if we'd like to roll into those, uh, and we have yes. perfect. All right. Let me pull those up. So it looks like we have. Uh, so our first question that we had was. Um, we saw i saw that your your exchange had come into play in 2018 2019 and as a new yep. exchange especially during the downturn of the market um how were you able uh you know how I, you might you must you guys must have a very tight team so uh, that's all i'm going to say to that is you guys probably have a very nice tight team that probably is just working together as best as they can and um how did you weather that storm to still to become one of the more dominant exchanges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great question. And indeed, like there were hard times, of course, over this period. But I should mention probably the fact that uh, although Whitebit as an exchange did go live in 2018, but uh, our team and our like 
core team especially the founders didn't show up from nowhere and have been working in the crypto space for years before that yeah our ceo for example and uh, a couple more uh key uh employees let's say yeah they have been working uh specifically in the sphere of uh, uh crypto exchange offices i believe i'm not entirely sure how to phrase it in english because i'm not a native speaker so sorry about that the the basically uh small companies that work on doing exchanges for from fiat to crypto so that's not a crypto exchange as we understand it it's just an exchange office yeah you see i hope i i make myself clear here yeah okay yeah 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 so uh that is one one thing yeah so we have had much experience working in that sphere before and uh, from the development stage from the development side i mean our uh, developers also have had experience working on various kind of blockchain technology years before whitebit was launched so uh, although yes indeed there were times where it wasn't easy where the market was going was seeming to go against us yeah but we weathered that storm and uh, another thing is that probably i should mention the majority of the time uh that we have been live we have been mostly focusing on development yeah because in our vision uh we should first uh, present a really qu high quality product so that when a user comes they will be able to see all the necessary functions they will be able to use all the tools that must be available to a user on an exchange and only then can we call ourselves a real exchange and that is why we have been mostly focusing on development for the for the past couple of years let's say yeah now i can say that we are finally ready especially with the launch of margin trading so now we are live as we should as i as i should say yeah nice <clears throat> i was going to say it's it's actually nice to see some exchanges you know not offering ridiculous amounts of of say leverage trade but even just a tiny bit you know it's it is it's a little bit refreshing to see um let's see here we do have another question here uh what are some of the key developments that you're currently working on as far as uh future implementation for whitebit mm -hmm. yeah so as i said the uh last i don't know half a year probably was completely devoted to margin trading it was like our major development we wrote it ourselves from scratch uh there were i don't know we have a couple of guys in the development team that are just fantastic i have seen the technical uh, specifications for margin trading i didn't go into that much but i can tell you that there was like 50 pages of just mathematic formulas and that <laughs> impressed me a lot yeah uh so margin trading is now live we will be working for some time on perfecting it from the technical side and uh next on our roadmap is to add more pairs to the margin trading uh initially we will be focusing on the top three assets which are uh bitcoin ethereum and usdt so there will be various uh variations on the pairs there and we will also be add adding to lever two new kind of leverages so right now it is available with x5 and we will also add x3 and x15 later but they will there will not be more yeah so we will we will limit ourselves with that probably for an initial period uh our developers are also currently working on a p2p platform which is called bitcoin global uh it is it has recently been launched and there is still some work to be done on that as well uh in a more let's say minor things we are working on revamp, revamp, revamping the design of the website itself so to make it look fresher a little bit yeah and uh, i myself am busy with setting up the trading competition section for whitebit in order for us to launch more uh kind of more kinds of promotions for the community and especially it works well when listing a new asset to conduct a trading competition to raise some interest in the community that's uh it's definitely sounds like you're on the right track um <laughs> Will you uh, will you be looking into pursuing Veris possibly as a verification uh, model? Yeah. So in terms of KYC, uh, we have our own in-house team uh, of support and our like standard uh, process and requirements for KYC. Uh, especially given that we are considering to be working with 
banks and other financial financial institutions in the future there should be a certain amount of scrutiny dedicated to a verification of our users but uh, definitely we are looking into what kind of possibilities there are what kind of alternatives there are for a verification process yeah so i uh, must admit that we haven't had much time discussing uh, various id i know like in a couple of words what it is and how it works but we haven't had much time to discuss it in details yeah i believe we should set up a kind of call with with a relevant person on your team and uh, have a discussion yeah so I, we will definitely be looking into looking into it <laughs> okay perfect perfect uh, and while we're still on the topic uh, while we're still on the topic of uh, of uh, security um, some of the hacks that have gone on with Facebook Twitter you know and yep. what has happened uh, what's uh, what does white bit have as far as security to prevent these from happening to your own exchange you know, uh, apart from be from having like uh, all the special, like we have a cybersecurity team that are taking care of that. I cannot say that I have extensive knowledge of what exactly is being done from their side. But uh, for example, recently I believe CoinGecko has released the new security metrics, uh, which they did in uh, partnership with was it Hacken? I, I I cannot say for sure. Don't remember the name. Yeah, so uh, we got the the highest score there. We got verified, yeah. But apart from that, there are also some uh, smaller and, I don't know, sometimes even funny things that uh, when it comes to security. For example, like except from uh, setting up 2FAs on all of our devices and all of our accounts, uh, we have constant reminders to change our passwords like every week or every month, yeah. And uh, there is also a small, like, funny tradition in our office. Whenever somebody goes, uh, leaves their desk and uh, leaves their screen uh, online, so they do not, they do not block it. Yeah, they do not uh, close it. Uh, somebody will go and uh, put on some kind of a funny video or maybe some kind of a picture. Yeah, that is <laughs> change their background yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing some some kind of a prank in order, like. It, it it really freaks out the the newbies, yeah. But but then they understand that it is like <laughs> for you to keep in mind that you should always you should never leave your laptop open, yeah. So even if you're in the office, so that's the data security is uh, taken pretty seriously at White Bit. Mm, perfect. Well, Ed, that's it's very refreshing to hear. Um, another question we had uh, that came up was, do you currently have plans to expand employee base to compensate for maybe U.S. flow once the, that might be enabled? And are there U.S. banks in the future that you're going to be partnering with for possibly uh, direct deposit ACH? Yeah, of course. So U.S. is obviously a big thing. Yeah, we have our lawyers uh, hard at work at obtaining the uh, I believe it is called money transmitter license, yeah, which would allow us to serve customers from the U.S. Uh, we should have received it earlier, but of course the coronavirus uh, did uh, cancel or delay some of the plans, so it is coming, but a little bit later. Uh, and in terms of employee base, like it, it isn't even connected to the whether we are or when we are expanding to U.S. or not, uh, but like we are constantly expanding our user base uh, our employee base yeah it's it's like every day i come into work and i see somebody new that i haven't seen yesterday i now even have troubles remembering the names of everybody <laughs> so uh, there are constantly new people coming and uh, it is also very refreshing to see that not only are we as a company expanding and hiring new people and constantly working on new projects and perfecting our exchange but from the other side as well uh, it is very great to see that uh, more and more people get interested in crypto as their main employment so many people are coming to interviews and saying that I have heard a great deal about cryptocurrencies and uh, exchanges and the great potential that it has and we would like to try it out to, to take a look at what what it is like from within yeah so that's it. Uh, in terms of banks, yeah, um, uh, right now the direction we are working towards in that regard is that we are 
obtaining the European uh, electronic money institution license. And that would basically allow us to function as a bank ourselves, yeah, which uh, apart from everybody, everything else is to accept uh, SEPA payments and uh, that sort of stuff. So this is the direction, this is our stance in terms of banks right now. Okay. <clears throat> there, this was actually a, a small little question, but I, seeing how we are, how we're dealing with Discord. Uh, so are, there, are, there, are there any are there any plans for you to actually have a uh, a Discord page specifically white for Whitebit, or are you going to yes. stick to uh, Telegram? Yeah. So right now, Telegram and Twitter are our major uh, social media channels. Yeah. But just today, in fact, we had a marketing team meeting where our further strategy in terms of social media was discussed, and uh, for the next couple of months, we will be focusing specifically on Discord and Reddit. Yeah, so Reddit being a great medium for uh, exactly such things as AMAs. Yeah, it is it is built in the way that would make it happen like more a little easy more and fluid. Yeah, 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 a little more fluid, right? And uh, Discord, both of those uh, social media channels actually are very popular with crypto. Uh, let's say people who are interested in crypto. Yeah, so we will be expanding into that as well. Okay. Um, as far as when you do move into the U.S. customer base, will you be uh, allowing margin trading for U.S. customers, or is that a, a separate uh, entity that might have to take place? Yeah, so uh, to be honest, I don't have the exact answer for that because like, it, it is up to our legal department to determine and to all the regulations that are in place in the U.S., and you all know that it is a mess out there. Yeah, it is. A regulated mess, but it is very complicated. So you have to be probably a lawyer to answer that. <laughs> but uh, margin trading is a part of our exchange. Yeah, it is not a, an external service. So uh, personally, I think that it will be offered altogether. Yeah. So if if Whitebit is allowed to serve U.S. customers, then probably they will also be allowed to take part in margin trading. But again, this is my personal opinion, and I do not have the exact answer, the, the right answer for no, this. No, no, that's fine. But I'm, I'm just happy to hear that it is, it is being worked on. Um, yep. That's perfect. Uh, so also, it, uh, you guys also have a financial license, which most exchanges do not have. Yeah, we have the financial licenses uh, issued by Estonian government. Uh, those are exchange license and custody license. Yeah, custody license allows us to basically uh, legally hold uh, crypto assets and exchange license allows us to uh, perform uh, transactions for them. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, they are actually available if you are interested on our website on the About Us page. You can go there and the links are right there. So you can take a look yourself. Perfect. Um, so the uh, another question we had too is you have the you have this, I believe it's 96 percent your cold storage lockup. So that uh, right. can you go into a little bit more detail about how that functions? Uh, yeah, so it is actually pretty simple. So the, the main idea here is that uh, we have all heard about big, uh, large-scale hacks that have happened on other exchanges where hackers got hold of a huge uh, amount of money, uh, user money at that. And uh, the logic behind... Uh, focusing on cold wallets was to uh, make it work in such a way that whenever a transaction comes to Whitebit, uh, only a certain am amount of that uh, remains on our hot wallet. The other part is sent to the cold wallet, which is offline. Yeah. Okay. So basically, in case even if some attack or anything else, God forbid, happens, uh, there will not be a substantial loss of funds because it will be on the cold wallet. The ninety-six percent of all the funds of the exchange will be on the cold wallet. Now, the other the other half of the uh, for the prevent you know hacks and intrusions and whatnot. What uh what what steps have you taken to protect users' KYC data? So uh, again, regarding KYC data. Uh, I'm not exactly familiar at how they are stored because it is all under NDAs and I'm not even allowed to like uh, to know that. So uh, I know that there are some secure, uh, uh, what is it called, storages, yeah, where, where those uh, data are 
stored and saved. So that is all I can say for that. So it looks like uh, we had we had our, our zero fee trading uh, through Varus. Uh, is that going to be extended at all? I know that it shut down supposedly on the 24th. I didn't know if we were extending it. No, no. It's Tuesday actually and... have been extended until today. Yeah, so we, we okay. wanted just to like, keep the community warmed up for the AMA a little bit. So, yeah, it is still on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Let's see here. Let's start. Well, let's, just, let's just go with uh, if, if people wanted to find up-to-date information minus uh, Twitter and Telegram. Wow. Um, is there any specific places that you post to or uh... yes yeah. so uh firstly we have our our medium blog where we uh, apart from all the news we also post such thing as a weekly diet or weekly highlights yeah, it's like a digest of everything that happens it contains some some interesting stories uh generic stories uh pertaining to the crypto space but it also contains everything white bit related that you might be interested in yeah mm. there's also an email digest uh so feel free to subscribe to our newsletters for that Perfect. and i should probably uh separately let you know that we also have our cto whose name is alexey he's uh he has his own twitter page on which he regularly posts uh, white bits updates yeah so it's a small like uh I don't know, mini blog, I don't know if I should call it that, of his own, the, where he posts all the uh, small and major updates from the technical side, which are available on Whitebit, yeah? For example, new programming languages added to our API, new uh, functions added to the Android or our iOS app. For example, just today we have released the dark theme for Android app, yeah? So everything that is related to, like, tech side of things can be found on his Twitter, and I would be happy to share the link. Uh, he has his own, I don't know, touch for <laughs> presenting this news. Yeah. So uh, I would love some of you or all of you to subscribe if you if you would like to. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I don't know how we uh, if I should post the link to the general channel or what would be the best way. Um, the actually the link would be perfect if you could post that into the uh, yep. in, into the questions channel and then I'll have Oink uh, just pin it to the top of the uh, the board. Okay. There you go. And I think that's all we. Uh, that's actually what we had for pre-submitted. Now we can move into uh, submitted questions that we have here uh, on our page. Uh. Yep. Sure. So what what should I do? <laughs> oh no no just uh just stay right where you're at. We're gonna, I think these are most of, the, most of these questions were actually for white uh for the for the white bit itself. Okay. Um, let's take a look here. Um, also Santos, quick uh, question. I know that some people are here to learn about white bit. I'm guessing some people are here to learn about Verso. If you want to mix up the questions. Sure. Perfect. You could, uh, Perfect. Sure. Mike, if you could uh, actually Mike, if you could stay unmuted, uh, just so you can hop in and um just in case the question is directed for you. I unmute is a click away. I'm ready. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, looks like we have here. What's our first question? Wow, a lot of people have actually been talking. Uh, da, 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 da. Could addresses be displayed more clearly so people can see what they see? Turn the wrong address. Hmm. Nope. Uh, so it looks like, uh, so Paco, this looks like a question for Varus, uh, as a newbie, I get confused with all the addresses in the wallet. It seems to, it seems to, it seems to so all addresses show all addresses. Could addresses be displayed more clearly so people like myself don't send to the wrong address? Sounds more like a, a UI question. I think that would be uh, for the wallet itself. Um, okay. I can go ahead and take that. I I, I don't see the um, I don't see uh, Michael Toot Jr. the lead wallet developer on, but um, so you know with Bitcoin, Komodo, Zcash, any of the Bitcoin derived currencies, the model uh, for addresses is that when you um, send currencies and you need to change address, or basically addresses are new addresses are created all the time. And uh, we also agree that there should be a little more sensibility in addresses. And it really relates to um, how to leverage, you know, creating new addresses versus zero knowledge proofs for privacy. 
So um, I, I agree, actually, that right now, you know, any wallet that's been used a lot will tend to accrue more addresses like change addresses or and, and there's a good reason for that. But now that we have IDs and now that we have, um, you know, kind of a combination of IDs, addresses and um, and Z addresses, zero knowledge, you know, private addresses, um, we are going to have a release and it's probably going to come after mainnet uh, multi-currency release. We will have a release that will where we're going to put real effort into um, having great solutions for address management, ID management, change, mining, you know, all of these different things. So um, I agree on the issue. I think the, the general issue of transparent addresses is, is a Bitcoin and Komodo and Veris and, and you know, it's kind of a, one of the the uh, issues related to change addresses. And yes, we would be happy to take uh, opinions, whether it's, you know, the labels and comments, which I think are actually already in there in the wallet or other things. Um, but really, we're planning to leverage IDs significantly and uh, more intelligent uh, change behavior to help to solve this problem because we don't think it's a problem that's unique to Veris. We think it's actually a problem that um, generally the address model should just be easier for people to use. We think we have all the ingredients and we are intending to work on that. So it's probably going to come after the multi-currency release hits mainnet though, to set expectation. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Andrew, I believe this question is uh, this is for you and uh, somebody who's got your audio and we can continue on. It's not a problem. Okay. Uh, what distinguishes your futures market from others and what future plans do you have to uh, to onboard traders? So you uh, probably uh, by futures market, uh, the uh, person who asked the question meant margin trading, right? I believe yeah, so. Uh, uh, I should probably mention that first there aren't a lot of exchanges that offer margin trading in itself yeah mm -hmm. and uh, it is as i said uh it has been done by ourselves from scratch uh it is like a fully fledged margin terminal yeah it is not uh something like binance has which are which is uh, i wouldn't call it exactly margin trading right so <laughs> What we have here is a fully fledged margin terminal and it is just in its initial phase. So as I said, we will be adding more pairs and we will be adding more kinds of leverage. And apart from that, there will also be a futures platform. Yeah, so that, that is coming a little bit later, but it will be there. There probably, there probably will be some higher uh, leverages. Uh, leverages. Uh, I cannot give an exact uh, timeline on that. Exact this will be planned in August. So in a couple of weeks, I will have an exact or an approximate ETA on that. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, traders and in general expanding our user base, yeah. So right now, uh, one of the uh, ways to do that would be to, uh, as we are doing right now, to interact directly with the community. Yeah. I believe that not many exchanges do that, um, uh, meaning that Whitebit's distinctive feature, I would say, is that we are uh, open to showing our face. And I know that it sounds ironic because I have my camera off right now. <laughs> but yeah, in general, this is so. And uh, yeah, we are an exchange with a face and we are happy and open to talk about issues with the community. We are open to hearing feedback. So that is one thing. We are happy to interact. We are happy to do AMAs, interviews and all that sort of thing. Of course, there are always constant uh, bounty campaigns or tournaments or uh, competitions going on. So right now we have demo tokens. Uh, if you haven't heard about that, it is a uh, free tool that we have made for people who are not yet into trading, but are willing to learn. So every user that signs up on Whitebit 
even if they do not pass KYC, they receive a small amount of demo tokens. So they receive 0.5 demo BTC and I believe 1000 demo USDT. So uh, they have no price of their own. They cannot be withdrawn. They, they exist only within Whitebit exchange. And what you can do with them is you can trade on a special demo pair. Yeah, it's like a trainee pair, let's say. So uh, it has all the functions that any other pair on Whitebit does, all the types of orders, including stop orders, stop limit and stop market, and also conditional orders, conditional limit and conditional market, which are also a pretty rare occasion on other exchanges. Yeah, And basically, you can uh, test your strategy, you can learn to trade, and uh, taking part in our demo token competition, you can also, if you show highest volumes, you can also receive real prizes in BTC, and we also giving away Matic. Yeah, so that is one thing. Uh, as I mentioned before, I am currently working on establishing a trading competition page on Whitebit. Yep. So in a couple of weeks, we will be seeing constant trading competitions that we will be doing with uh, major projects as, as well as uh, uh, some, uh, let's say, smaller projects that we list. Yeah. So there is a trading competition plan planned with Harmony. Uh, so that should be live when the that section of the website goes live and like a couple of more down the line. Right now, I believe we have six or seven trading competitions in the pipeline waiting for that. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. We are, also, we are also working closely with a bounty platform, which is called WinPlay. Uh, they are great because they have managed to turn bounty campaign into a gamified process, which is also educational. Yeah. So what they do is they are actually, uh, they, uh, uh, let's say, create a campaign where users are incentivized to complete certain tasks for which they will receive a reward. That does sound like a yeah, like a usual bounty campaign, but it also has its own specifics. So it's not just like do a tweet, uh, follow somebody on Telegram and receive your tokens. Yeah, it's more in-depth, let's say. So you are incentivized to actually go deeper into the project and learn what it is about and, and work on that. So those are probably our uh, main strategies for attracting new users and traders. For traders, yeah, uh, for traders, the big thing, of course, is creating all the necessary functions that would attract big traders, yeah? We do have liquidity. Uh, what we also have is all the like advanced chart analysis tools, as I mentioned, types of orders that are uh, on some exchanges not available at all because like, some exchanges do not even offer stop orders, yeah, which is you probably would think a must on an exchange, yeah. So yes. such such thing as demo tokens, smart staking program, of course, uh, for those who are uh, more into passive income, let's say. We have a referral prog a referral program that is currently also being remade to like be more interactive and engaging. So probably that is the entire list. <laughs> No, that's that's that's, that's perfect. Um, let's see, we have some other questions here. Uh, there's a question from Achilles. This is for Mike. It says, "Do you have any mechanisms such as buyback and burning to regulate the demand and supply of Varus so as to increase its intrinsic monetary value?" Well, okay, so buyback and burning. Uh my mind doesn't increase any intrinsic value and it's really more just uh i think of it as uh you know corporations and and companies that are really focused on um on making money off of a crypto do things like that or we, we do have the ability in the in the uh currency system to burn currencies but we don't we don't play any games at all with uh, Varus, and we are not a company. There is no company or central um, organization that does anything to try and bump up the price or do anything besides just educate people on what it is. Just like nobody did that stuff on Bitcoin in the early days, we don't do that stuff, and we don't really don't focus on that at all. We're going to we're going to succeed because of the technology that we are are creating to enable people to do things that they want to do. And 
our growth is natural and organic and we are not, um, you know, there's no, there's no profit making entity at the center of Verus. It's a worldwide public open source protocol. And we as a community are driving it forward and more people are joining on a regular basis to help make that happen. But you will not find any kinds of uh, what look like, you know, corporate kinds of efforts to pump up the price because well, you may think of that or say, or, or people in crypto might think of that as having it creating intrinsic value. It doesn't really do anything besides move the price around a little and maybe like a lure in the water, you know, cause things to dance around that causes traders to jump after it. You know, I think there was a, I, I don't remember the name of the person who originally said, you know, that, um, that, in the long run, markets are a weighing machine and we're creating value that will be long-term measurable value versus of short-term. Uh, we're not really focused on short-term price up and down. So we've been that way from the very beginning, still that way. And I think the core community will probably always be that way. So no, we don't have any buyback programs. We do. We do, you know, the foundation sometimes, like we, foundation recently bought Veris because it needed Veris for different things. And it's got Veris, but it's got, um, you know, Veris that's unlocking. And so if if the foundation needs Veris for a reason, it might buy Veris if it's able, but if it, um, it it's not going to do it just to move prices around. That's, that's not something, you know, that... Um, that we would really look at doing because we don't believe that that is intrinsic value. We believe more that that is um, an illusion. I hope I'm speaking for myself, by the way, because we are a decentralized organization, but I know that that's the opinion of the foundation. And I know that that's the opinion of most people uh, working on core work in the community. If anyone wants to disagree with me, of course, we're decentralized, so that's <laughs> quite fine. Santos, you can you can do so as well. So. <laughs> oh, no. Um, let's see here. Is, uh, is there a way to have a joint Varus ID or a family ID with two signatures? Oh, that's a great question because the answer is absolutely. Um, so all Varus IDs are uh, inherently multi-sig. They can have up to 10 different uh, controlling addresses and a number that you select of the number of addresses required to sign for a Veris ID. And this actually goes for uh, signing digital content or for spending uh, transactions. Uh, and as everybody who's used Veris knows, or especially on testnet, Veris ID will apply to all currencies across the Veris ecosystem. So. But yes, you can have, you know, if you've got uh, three people in a family, then you could actually put all three people, um, you know, an address from each of those three people as the primary, as one of the primary addresses of a Veris ID. And you could specify two out of three, like minimum signatures required is two. And that would just mean that now it still has the friendly name, it still has everything else. But in order to spend or sign, and two of the family members would need to be present. And that's a really great question. If I can, uh, I'm, I'm just going to take the liberty to lead into what that allows. So if you have a family ID as a uh, revocation, even say revocation and recovery ID for your ID, you can assign your family, like two of three of your family or three of five of your family is the only group of people who will be able to recover, evoke and recover your ID. Um, you could assign one group, one person to be a person who can revoke. You could even assign a company with AI fraud analysis to be the one that revokes. Because once they revoke, they have no more power over the ID at all. And then you could have your family as the group that can recover. And so you can use this kind of technology for everything from recovering and sharing accounts across families or things like that. 
companies to selling companies and all of the blockchain assets of those companies all at once. Because when you transfer an ID or when you revoke and recover an ID, if it's got a million UTXOs behind it, all of those million UTXOs transfer ownership, the one recovery, nothing else needs to happen. So um, you can, you can definitely <clears throat> have a family uh, ID that shares its authority. You can make it that anyone can sign for it. You might have a, might have a family ID that in the future we, you know, with the value currency and what's happening in that patent portfolio, you have a key that is your front door key, your car key, and, and a bunch of other keys. And your and it's actually backed backing your family currency. As I'm, I'm sorry, your family ID. And so everybody in the family could have a right to use the key all of the things that the family has access to um it's, it's very flexible in that way and you can use it you know for everything from inheritance to recovery um in so many different ways and it's really just a like this is a technology that people should come and build applications for a lot of times i get questions about are you going to make this feature in the, you know are you going to make that and and the funny thing is, is that you can make that feature, but so can anybody else, because this is all just an open public protocol. And the technology that, like, what is possible with IDs, it's already amazing with what we've just enabled, but what is possible is so much more than what we have enabled in the wallet or the applications. And anybody can do those things. So, yes. Oh my God. Ah, okay, yes. Uh, yes, on the hardware wallet and the cold wallet staking is even better. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe a feature. Someone can try to copy us, but nobody has, it doesn't matter. We're open. Nobody has the um, Verus ID, revocability and recoverability that we do on other blockchains. So I'm going to describe a feature that will be a theft proof uh, staking capability that we do intend to, like we're working on, we know how to do it. So it's basically this, the, um, the feature would be, call it a time lock. Okay. And you'll be able to put it on any ID. And when you time lock an ID to set the time when you lock it, not when you unlock it. You set the time when you lock it. And when you unlock it, that's a step that happens on the blockchain and you then have to wait for it to unlock before you can spend or before you can sign with it. So the really cool thing about this is that um, you can still stake when the, when the uh, ID is locked. So what that means is you lock an ID, you lock your ID, you put a bunch of funds on an ID, you time lock it, and you say, you know, um, I'll, I'll let those funds wait for, you know, six hours, 12 hours, a day, however long, uh, when I want to unlock it. But until then, you can just freely stake on it. And you know what? If somebody steals your keys, and they want to take your money, guess what they have to do first? They have to unlock it. And then you get all this notice that somebody who isn't you is trying to take your funds. So with Varus, you simply just revoke and recover because you can. You never lose your funds. And, and so that's, uh, yeah, that's something that, you know, we... We have the plan in place, but we uh, and we have the revocability and recoverability that actually allows us to do something, and it effectively makes a theft-proof model. So, um, How many I don't know of any. <laughs> so, but but the thing is that yes, 
we are planning to do that as our solution to because cold wallet staking isn't staking really um that's staking is a process of supporting the function of the network by processing a block of transactions when you earn the right to do so and can prove it and anything else is you know if you're getting money from holding your currency or you know you're getting even liquidity uh providers that are going to get fees from the implied volatility fees just by holding a currency um you know those are liquidity fees those are not staking really it's not staking is a process that um you know that if you have a cold wallet you really can't you have to be able to prove on the blockchain that you earned the right to stake which the only way that you can really prove that is by you know using the keys to show that you are able to do that um or or somehow proving that you still have them which that's why cold wallet staking is more like um it's delegated stake really and it and it you know we've talked about this a lot it centralizes the network and we, and because we're going to have so many so many different uh chains worldwide across this network you know people will be able to stake and mine on a variety of different chains that are interoperable and liquid between each other they're not going to need to decentralize the network because their value will be more local to them and they will have less staking and mining competition naturally actually get enough have you know i have to wait for a year before they might earn a block so right now we're we're looking at doing staking as real staking, full decentralized staking and mining following the normal model where we have mining pools or you can solo mine. And when we have the merge mining um, with the multi-chain, which is gonna allow you to, to mine up to 22 different coins on one hash, and we expect uh, you know, that there will be pools that compete on the different ways that they merge mine. There will be companies that will be merge mining some you know, internal blockchains that they use for their internal applications. And there will be uh, uh, people who might solo mine a lot of different coins at the same time. And Achilles, I see your question in questions. What's special about Varus compared to other privacy coins? We just, all of the things we just said, I don't know of those things being in any of the other currencies that support uh your knowledge proofs. And then one other thing I'd say this, I see another question. Sorry, I'm not trying to just run away with the questions, but how does Varus attract projects? Let me explain something about how, what we're working on. We have a developer right now who's been, who's making great progress in the community. Um, a developer donated by one of the uh, member companies, his work is being, you know, but, but he, I think he's really enjoying the work he's doing. And and he's developed uh, solidity contracts that will enable uh, you to send your ERC-20 or ETH currencies directly over to the Varus blockchain. They will leave the Ethereum blockchain effectively. Um, they'll be held by the contract on that side. They will now be over uh, in the various blockchain, um, everything completely decentralized, uh, then you'll be able to also send various currencies, various ecosystem currencies to the Ethereum blockchain. And, and this part of the contract is already written and functioning and we're, you know, we're working on a plan to get this up and running across the Rinkby test net uh, with Varus at some point. And so the idea is this, if you create a Varus currency then you send it over to the Ethereum blockchain. It's an ERC-20 token. So you create a Varus currency that is uh, launched on Varus and you and you take, um, you know, a variety of different currencies as part of this, some fair launch that you make. 
and people send it over to Ethereum and it pops out as an ERC-20 token and you can write applications in Solidity if you want. I don't know if you'd want to, but you might if you feel like it. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll be doing applications that continue at the protocol level. You can you can create your own main net pretty much you know, immediately with uh, a PBAS blockchain if you start uh, running into scale. And so when you say how will it attract projects, um, you know, my plan for what I was going to show, which I'm going to do after we get off this call, my plan for what I was going to show when the video wasn't working, technical difficulty on the video, was to launch a currency, just, it's a command. Uh, let me see the command that I, you know, it's a command to launch a currency that then has all of the fractional capabilities. Uh, literally, we're, we're going to be able, like not going to, it works right now in testnet. You can launch a currency, you can define a pre-launch minimum, so that if that pre-launch minimum is not met, then you, um, everyone just gets their money back when they participated. If the pre-launch minimum is met, you can enable people who participated in the pre-launch to have an on-chain price discount relative to the final price that is going to be on-chain when it actually is fully activated. You can send it around to IDs. You can send it over to Ethereum and you can use it there. Or you can you can use like a, a currency that currently is on Ethereum, send it over to Verus and use it as one of the reserve currencies of a Verus fractional currency. I think it's going to be really hard to, I mean, I don't think there's really going to be a big problem in getting people to use it because who wants to make a solidity contract just to make a currency, really? And why not solve front running? But anyways, those are just a few thoughts about that. I, I, no, thank you all my that. opinion, oh, all my opinion, not, you know, and, and thoughts on it. So I have uh, I have one more question here. It's gonna be Tor. It's gonna be geared for Andrew, and it states that for the time lock, will that be a feature or be something to be utilized for uh, for the staking of Varus? Oh, the, so, the, the, the time lock would just be a time lock. Um, the plan is just to have a time lock on an ID. So you literally like you just you take an ID and you and you time lock it. Now you can untime lock it from that ID, but revocation ID and recovery IDs can be separate and have more authority to just revoke than recover. They, you know, so the way it works is the primary ID can do all of the normal things. It can even lock and unlock, but it can't change the time limit. Revocation can only revoke. It can't spend, it can't sign, it can only revoke. And then once it revokes, it has no more power over the ID. And the recovery ID can only recover. It basically gets complete power over the ID when it's revoked and has no other control over the ID before that. So, um, so basically you lock your ID and you can now no longer sign with that ID unless you unlock it. If you're a company with a sensitive signature, nobody can sign on your behalf unless it's unlocked. If somebody unlocks it in order to, to forge a signature, you see that ahead of time. You know, I envision kind of uh, applications or, or explorers or even AIs that are monitoring, let you know, just give you a message. You can have an app that just gives you a message. Or you can have a little wallet that just you know, regularly checks in the background if, if you have unlocked your IDs and lets you know. And will revoke. So, th so the basic idea is that it's going to be a feature of IDs. You're going to have the ability to time lock them, but it won't stop them from being able to stake. So you'll still be able to stake using a time locked ID. You just can't have the coins taken out of it, and you can't have its signature forged either. Gotcha. So, um, gotcha. so I see a question which might be a nice question. And yes, Varus means uh, two. Uh, 
and I see the question, will the revoke only return the coins to the original address? No, no, no. So the way that, so the way it works is uh, it's different than any normal kind of a blockchain address. It's really your friendly name registered. It's, you know, quantum ready. And I'll explain what that means. So what it, so how it works is all of the funds and all of the UTXOs are to the ID itself on the blockchain. And so if you revoke and recover to another address, means you put another address as the primary address in that ID. Then now all of the funds are under control of the new address. Just like that, if you, so um, uh, Chris Monkins has done, uh, Chris Monkins has done uh, the, the, um, Falcon 512 quantum resistant signature work, and there's still some work to be done to integrate it into the uh, wallet. But once that's done, you'll be able to assign one of your addresses as being a Q address, a quantum resistant address. And you'll be able to assign that to your um, Ferris ID as its controller. And if you do, once you do that, all of the UTXOs on the blockchain that are under the control of that ID become quantum resistant, as quantum resistant as the signature algorithm that controls that address. And the idea of being able to, to use IDs, various IDs are somewhat of a different thing. They haven't existed before in a blockchain protocol. And so the idea of being able, like you literally could have, you know, 10,000 UTXOs that are sent to an ID. And if you reassign that ID to someone else by say selling your company and transferring all of your blockchain assets, it's one transaction and all of the ownership moves. A new model that applications <laughs> could use to have a new, a new, you know, avenue to scalability for different things. Great. Um, so, uh, is yes, uh, or Scott. Yes, that's all on mainnet today. And this, and we haven't even talked about the uh, their mainnet. ability because you know you can sign data with them. And so there is a um, there's actually a protocol that's going to come out in the next mobile wallet, I believe. And I think I think I saw Michael Toot Jr. Is he on now? Uh, yeah, so I think this is the, the protocol that's going to come out in the next uh, mobile wallet that will allow you to attest to um, properties for another person, which they can then prove that you attested to. And the way we're doing it is they'll be able, I, we've already talked about this, but other people probably on this call haven't heard it. If you have a passport or your KYC info, that is proven in your Veris ID, you will be able to simply prove your age and your first name, for example, without having to show any of the other data that went into that proof in order to show that the, the same authority that gave you that KYC ID says you are, you know, 29 years old or your name is Santos the Great, that's your, you know, this kind of thing. But but anyways, uh, that's, I see other questions, so I don't want to just overrun. Ah, Chris asked about links. A lot of these things are going to be uh, published. So uh, for Chris F, um, he asked, you asked about uh, get some, uh, there are a few different things. Okay. I want to answer both of these questions. Would it be possible to get links to info on what has been talked about? IDs, quantum resistance, etc. cetera. Um, right now, the most clear understanding of, you know, for yeah, IDs yeah, is really in release day. notes. We'll be right at it. Um, and then articles that describe how they work. And then the API help. Um, and then of course, source code. Uh, 
we will be writing more, but we're kind of on a tear to get a lot of these things really in place and solid. And I don't mean IDs, that's all done. I mean, the multi-currency and the PBAS and quantum resistance. So I'll just give you a little info on the quantum resistance. So we already have implemented in the, in the um, daemon, but it's not being leveraged. And this is uh, thanks to uh, Monkins, Chris, um, the Falcon 512 uh, signature, quantum resistant signature algorithm, which was the smallest for public key size and signature size and, um, and significantly secure. So we take a look at that to learn about that, but that'll, we expect to do what's called, what we're gonna call a Q address. It'll look just like a normal address. It'll be a Q address you'll be able to make Q addresses that are quantum resistant, and then you'll be able to put those in IDs, control IDs and their funds and everything else. Um, and then you'll be able to have a quantum resistant signature. Uh, this is our this is our work in progress. And it's all like, I don't see any technical barriers to that at all because most, all the, all the hard stuff is in place. Um, then I see a question, is an ID created in a PBAS chain, the same one as on the main chain? And that is a, I love that question because it's really important and we haven't addressed that. So the ID naming system is absolutely global and is, so what that means is inside of Varus, in the Varus ecosystem, in all PBAS chains, there is a friendly naming convention, which is in fact exactly what you've shown, but it, but right now it would be xxx.pbaschainname.veris at, and it can actually go on indefinitely. And we also have a model that's being used for the data specifications for signing and attestation. So effectively your ID gives you a space in the digital world for all things beyond that ID. You can make a currency out of it. You can make a blockchain out of it. You can make sub identities out of it. You can issue your own identities and those identities can be recognized on other blockchains, imported and exported other blockchains across the various ecosystem and used as those identities on a different chain. And so um, the naming and identity system, we thought ahead of making sure that, and, and in fact, if uh, Ethereum, or Bitcoin decides implement, you know, the same protocol with the same kind of a naming convention and the same kind of a model for um, mapping that to an I address. They could, and we would even be able to recognize those. So um, it's, you know, the whole ID system, the naming system, the, the, um, there's a variable naming and a, and a specification naming system that grows out of it. It's much bigger. It's kind of like DNS squared, but much bigger. It's much bigger than what it kind of looks like right now. And all of that will be um, documented by us. And we expect the growing community as, you know, as it grows. But yeah, you can, you can, it was intended to be fully, um, interoperable across all of the various network and PBAS chains worldwide, as well as um, external chains that way. So it says, so buying an ID on the Varus main chain earmarks that name on all future chains. That actually is not true. It is not true. Um, all names on all different chains are their own. You can have a, you know, you can make a blockchain and you can, on that blockchain, you can have a different name, but then it's going to be name dot blockchain name dot VRSC at. And so you do not, yeah, so, okay. Sorry, just wanted to make sure that we didn't have a misunderstanding. No, no. Okay, Santos, back to you. Uh, the question was is yeah we can be looking for representatives from each project say uh, like that? like how you are a representative uh, for your uh, for your exchange it's on the side um, oh, so I just got to mute somebody here uh, will you be looking for representatives from each of the projects that are represented on whitebit and then say have like a monthly meeting or whatnot <coughs> uh, with all of those representatives 
Mm -hmm. So firstly, uh, Mike, that was great. Uh, that got me interested. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really always a pleasure to hear a developer talking about things that he works on and loves. Yeah, so that, that was great. Um, and in terms of this question, uh, this is a great idea towards decentralization, uh, but it, it should also be understood that Whitebit itself is a centralized exchange and we have a core team who are also decision makers that uh, offer our further strategy, utilizing their experience and their vision and their background and so on. Yeah. Uh, that being said, we are of course looking for uh, feedback, both from project representatives and from the project's community. So I don't know if that will ever take a form of, I don't know, monthly meetings. Yeah. Uh, I, I, to be honest, haven't seen it anywhere yet on other exchanges realized like that. Yeah. But uh, probably we will think of some kind of uh, more, let's say, organized feedback collection. We did have a, uh, what's it called? A questionnaire sent out to our users just a couple of months ago. I, I really wish that you uh, were there by then. Uh, it, it asked users to answer some questions about the exchange and in general about their preferences in terms of trading and, and uh, what is essential for them while choosing an exchange. Yeah, and we also rewarded everyone for participation. So we will be doing more of that uh, in the future as well. And yeah. That's, that's it. We just had a question come in for you. <clears throat> it says, uh, mm -hmm. as we know, many large exchanges also make their own tokens and coins in various uses. Does Whitebit also have tokens and coins? What's this for and how is the market? I think many investors have thought about buying a coin. Uh, I believe uh, it's about uh, our exchange token, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, so it is in development and should be released just within a couple of weeks. So we will have our own exchange tokens, token one. Yeah, it will be Whitebit token or Whitebit coin. I'm not sure about the name yet. Yeah, so uh, it will basically use all the features that, uh, I mean, had, ha have all the features that a an exchange token has. Yeah, you will be able to pay fees with it. You will be able to... Uh, receive some perks or something else because uh, it is not yet final. Yeah, we are finalizing it basically as we speak. Yeah, so there will be a meeting tomorrow where we will be talking more on that. And of course, this will be announced and I will let you know. As we Andrew, yeah. Andrew, you should, you yep, really yep. should talk to us if, if you're doing, if you haven't done your, your currency yet, I, you know, you, you should at least have a discussion with us about this i believe it is already written so, it is in the receipt when you're talking so i believe the it is uh, it's already you know there are things you do with Barris that you're just not going to be able to do in other ways but we should just talk offline i don't want to put you totally on the spot and i don't know how far along your plans are and we don't let's not make any assumption but uh really you would owe it to your you, your company that there's is, no that is real downside that i could see to at least having a discussion to understand we should do that, that. is a good point I, I i'm open to having a discussion i should probably put somebody from like our developers on that uh so let's do it sure why not perfect ah ja, gentlemen let's see we uh let's see if we still have any questions rolling in other than that i know andrew you're you're pressed up for a little bit of time right now so uh, yeah i i'm really sorry but it is just getting a bit late here so i would love to get some sleep <laughs> no worries no worries so if anything we're gonna what we'll do is for now uh we will wrap up the q a portion of uh of our of our current ama uh if you would like to stick around please do um you know, uh, definitely go check out Whitebit. Uh, it's definitely probably it's one of the more smoother exchanges I've actually ever seen. Um, me being an, me being an American, I cannot currently use it, but I can, yeah. I can I can check it out and take a look at its functionality, and I, I I'm actually I'm kind of impressed. Uh, and as far as from Mike, thank you very much for all your information. You've been fantastic today. Uh, I know there's there definitely been a lot of questions asked left and right from from pretty much everybody, and it's kind of all across the board with uh, with these questions, which was actually really good. 
Um, we will be uh, we'll be holding a basic uh, crypto trivia. Uh, so if you want to stick, if you guys want to stick around for that, uh, we will be will be rewarding in Veris token uh, for right answers through the, for these trivia. Uh, it'll be generalized knowledge, so if there are members from Whitebit and there are members from Veris, it's not going to be specifically like, you know, wh wh what college did the CFO of Whitebit go to? I know. <laughs> I know. But, you know, nobody else is going to know that. So uh, we're going we're gonna to keep that just as like a basic, uh, just as like very basic crypto knowledge. And uh, I hope that you guys have some fun and I hope to hear from you more often. Yeah, if I may just say like a couple of words in the end so ju just a huge thank you for you uh, because it, it was a pleasure uh, really i i like uh, in interacting with you all and it was a great experience yeah so thank you for putting it together thank you for being such a great community and we are very very happy to see you listed on whitebit so i'll close with that thank you very much andrew thank you all have a great day or night or wherever you are uh, all yeah. your work on yeah. See ya. All your let everyone know and, um, and thanks everyone thank for joining as well yes thank you thank guys you, uh, yeah uh, I will be here I will be like on and off on discord until we like set it up properly but I will be here for some questions so feel free to DM me or to write in the channel ping me like anything I, I, I will try to do my best to stick around for answering you all right perfect thank you so much goodbye have a good night Thank you. Alrighty. So, so, so the latest question we had was, do we have time to take a restroom break? Yes. Yes, you do. So I'm going to set a five minute timer. Five minutes from now, we will start our trivia and we're going to be keeping that right here in the questions and reward room. And we will go from there. <laughs>